All right, so this is the changeover valve for the different tanks. Everybody I talked to said, don't touch it until you get home because you don't have a problem and get stuck. Well, today's the day. I decided I've got the balls today to flip the switch and see what it does. So let's see. Oh, it's stiff. Oh, oh it made a positive click. That seems like it's working. <laughs> I think it works. I guess the ultimate test will be to start it up on the back tank and see how it starts. Well, while we wait for the battery to charge up to finish checking the generator, I'm going to pull the top off the governor here assembly just to see if there's anything in the top that's plugged not allowing it to drain correctly. So I need to, this can stay, but I need to disconnect this. Looks like I need a second half inch, I'll be right back. How about a 13 instead for Volkswagen mechanics? So this guy's got an air shutdown, which is abnormal. We don't normally have this. And it appears it's full of air. And in the shutdown position. Um, oh, it's putting too much pressure. I might have to go let the air out of the bus. Now it's loose. So if you recall from my trip back from Minnesota, we had oil leaking out the breather tube at the back of the governor here. That's why I wanted to tear into this a little bit today to see if I could find something that was blocking the oil from draining at the top here. Maybe the oil was coming from the head and uh, flowing out the back, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It, uh, it's all nice and clean in here. There's nothing to, that I can see. There's no issues. Everything's working properly. So at this point, I suspect the oil feed from the bottom, if you look, there's an oil feed that comes into the, the bottom of the governor there. That uh, That's a high pressure oil feed to feed the lower shaft. And I suspect what's happening is, is something in that portion of the governor is pre preventing the oil from draining. So um, nothing I can fix today. I'm going to have to get a gasket set and tear the governor completely apart. I may even have to get into the blower because it does drain through the end of the blower there. So it's nothing I can fix today. Uh, Got to dig a little bit deeper. Um, just as a side note, in case you're wondering about my fuel valve, it did work initially, but then at some point it stopped working and it started pumping the overflow from one tank into the other tank. So uh, I did have a bit of a fuel drip at one point that I had to fix. Uh, it was just a matter of cleaning the valve out. There was some gunk in it and uh, put it back together and all is good. So the valve works. Front and rear tanks are working great. 
back together for now. In turn. So here we are doing a GPS speedometer installation on the 3751 today. Um, it's a very basic kit that I've bought. I bought it off Amazon. It was $100 Canadian, shipped to my door. So um, what do you get for 100 bucks? We're going to find out. Uh, the black wire that's all coiled up there running out of the back of the speedometer is the antenna wire. So temporarily, I've just routed it up through where the spotlight used to be, and we're just going to sit it on the dash for now. Eventually, we're going to replace the windshields, and then once the windshields are replaced, I'll actually stick it to the front window and tie it down properly. So I've identified four wires here that we've got to hook up. Um, so there's a power wire, obviously. Uh, it goes to the ignition so that when you turn the power on to the bus, it powers up. There's a ground wire, obviously. Then there is two more wires that I need. One goes to a button so I can switch between the odometer and the trip odometer. And then the last one is for the backlighting. Um, there's a bunch of extra wires I didn't use. Uh, you get the choice of color for the backlighting and there are indications for the left and right turn signals and the high beams. Um, maybe eventually I'll wire those in, but for now we just want the speedometer to work. And this isn't even the speedometer I'm going to keep long term because this was just a cheap one. Uh, I'm going to order a good one from Speed Hut that has proper colors and everything to match the silver side a little bit better. But uh, I didn't want to wait six weeks for a speedometer. So if we lift this up, you can see it's it's a black one. It doesn't match, but it'll do for now. Um, but let's go ahead and get this wired up and then let's test it out and tell you guys how it works. And uh, I chose one that only goes up to 120 kilometers an hour because the bus will only do about 100 kilometers an hour, maybe 105, 110, maybe down a good hill. So I thought it was a good fit for the bus. And uh, we're going to get this wired up and give it a test drive. Okay, so I've got it uh, set up. I've got it programmed to the right mileage. And uh, here, if I turn my light off for a sec, you can you can see how it illuminates. It's It's okay. It looks all right. It's not perfect by any stretch it doesn't match the rest of the dash but it's easy to read read for now until i can get something better it's probably easier to read than what the original would have been um so it, it has an odometer and it has a trip function so if i push the button we can switch to the trip and uh i can even preset a buzzer for if i go over a certain speed so i've got it set to 110 kilometers an hour it's going to buzz at me to let me know that i'm going too fast um let's go for a drive and See how it works. Okay, good morning. This is the next day after I was fiddling with the GPS speedometer last night. It got a little too dark and late to run the bus. So we're going to do a road test today to see how the speedometer works. So let's do a cold fire up here of Gus. I don't think Gus is going to start without some ether, but I, I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, we've been down to pretty cold last night. Uh, single digit temperatures at night time. Um, Gus hasn't been wanting to start when it's closer to freezing without ether, but let's give it a shot. So, the speedometer is powering up. It's doing some kind of a count. It takes 30 seconds to a minute to acquire all its signals. Um, let's see if Gus will start though. Nothing. So I'll be right back. We'll give it a shot of ether. Quite enough. Try that again.
so we got Gus running. The problem with Gus was the uh, emergency shutdown was triggered. So learning that <coughs> learning moment here. If you uh, work on your dashboard and you have your dashboard out, check your emergency shutdown. Didn't need any ether once I put the flapper up. Waiting for the speedometer to do its thing. We got air pressure because we had the bus running already, but the speedometer is still counting. Oh, there it goes. Got oh, it might help if I turn this guy around so it's actually pointing at the sky. Okay. There you have it folks, a very simple GPS four wire installation. Um, not much to it. The only thing I have left to do is I have to put a toggle switch onto this guy. I can just touch it to the frame for now to toggle the odometer, but I'm going to put a switch in. Hope you enjoyed this.